Great improvements in the death rate for tuberculosis were seen around about the mid-1900s. But our story here at Didworthy starts at the turn of the century when Lord Mount Edgecombe promoted the creation of a sanatorium here in the fresh air in the beautiful surroundings on the edge of Dartmoor. The movement for the establishment of the sanatorium was formed in a meeting in Plymouth on the 3rd of December 1901 and just one month later they found their location and the need to raise funds for the initial setup. Funding was gained from various individuals and parishes both in Devon and Cornwall and by the 13th of May 1903 the sanatorium was opened with room for 16 beds. The first patient was a dressmaker from Plimstock, aged just 19, and the report showed that she was discharged greatly improved after just six months, but then subsequently went on to die in 1909. In the early 1900s, every district throughout the county thought that they would have a poor union responsible for the workhouse and for the poor people of its parish. They saw the benefit of good health and allowing people to go back to work rather than relying on their poor guardians. From the archives we see how the Oakhampton Board of Guardians deal with a pauper who's suffering from TB. So Jeffreys was sent to Didworthy and we can see from the minutes of the board that there was a delay, possibly due to all 14 beds being occupied. But six weeks after his arrival there was a letter sent to Oakhampton with some unexpected news. It is with regret that I have to inform you that the man Jeffreys that had been placed in our care by yourselves has been dismissed for insubordination. Jeffreys had been placed with us for a period of three months but was dismissed after only six weeks. The regime at Didworthy is strict and fair with the sole intention of improving the health of our patients. Part of the regime is light work to exercise the lungs and Jeffreys simply refused to take part in this. Regards, Mr Fleming. The hospital continued its work with great demands being placed on it during both the First and the Second World War when extra patients would arrive. At times it was necessary to create extra beds in the chapel and the schoolroom. Some of the earliest memories of Didworthy come from the time around the war 